In November of last year, we talked about the upcoming hardware for 2022, basically creating a roadmap with all expected releases from Intel, Nvidia, AMD and Apple. It's been about 5 months since then and I think it's time for an update. What turned out to be true? What was way off? And how does the current roadmap look like when we take the up-to-date infos and leaks into account? <laughs> The roadmap video was released shortly after the launch of Auto Lake. Initially, Intel only released their K CPUs. We knew the non K parts and mobile CPUs were supposed to be released in the first quarter of 2022, and Intel did deliver. Not only were all additional Auto Lake CPUs released within the promised time frame, Intel also offered some pretty good deals. Mobile Auto Lake delivered great performance while staying efficient, and entry level desktop CPUs like the i5 12400F offered great value for the money. When we take a look at Intel server CPUs, current rumors say that Sapphire Rapids is further delayed to the end of the third quarter, which might also mean that the HEDT version, Sapphire Rapids X, will also come a little later than expected. But we are talking a couple of weeks to maybe two months here, nothing major. The next-gen Raptor Lake CPUs might even be pushed ahead a little bit, with a release in the third quarter becoming more and more likely. Intel seems to pick up their pace when it comes to desktop CPUs. I have talked about how Raptor Lake could possibly disrupt the launch of Zen 4 in a previous video. So to recap, Intel's CPU lineup performed as promised and so far hit all their release timeframes. Sapphire Rapids might be pushed back a tiny bit, but at the same time Raptor Lake could launch earlier than expected. We haven't heard of any new Intel CPU products being released in 2022, so the roadmap doesn't really change at all. Intel did great when it comes to their CPUs, but what about their GPU lineup? I have to be honest, Intel's GPU roadmap plans turned out to be a disaster. At the end of 2021, Intel made it look like their ARC GPUs would launch in early 2022. But then we waited and waited, and Intel kept on delaying. The much-awaited CES presentation led to more questions instead of answering any, and so far we have gotten only empty promises. They did announce their mobile GPU lineup on March 30, literally the latest pointer still had their quarter 1 promise, but it was only an announcement. You can't even buy their A300, A500 in a 700M ARC mobile GPUs yet. Intel will only start shipping them at the end of the second quarter. And forget about the desktop GPUs in early 2022. Intel now claims summer 2022 as a release time frame. We all know what to think of imprecise announcements like this. Summer could be early June or late August. And if we are super lucky, Intel will hit us with another announcement in late summer and products will ship in fall. Intel's GPU department completely failed the timeline they set themselves. Instead of releasing competitive ARC Arc GPUs in the first quarter, they pulled a fast one and actual products are still nowhere to be seen. The desktop GPUs are so far removed we don't even have a launch date yet, aside from summer. I don't understand how Intel's GPU department could fail this badly compared to their CPU department where they delivered as promised. It's not like this was all based on rumors. Intel themselves teased us with an early 2022 release. If you can't hit targets, just don't make any promises. I have to be frank, Intel's whole ARC debacle is a major disappointment for me and all my hype is gone. If and when Intel will finally deliver a competitive product in a GPU space is yet to be seen. Don't get your hopes up. Of course this also means the new roadmap has shifted quite a bit as you can see. Next up is AMD. Let's see how they perform. My most anticipated CPU in early 2022 was Zen 3D. Now don't get me wrong, Zen 3D is still a technical marvel with its stacked L3 cache, but I am disappointed that AMD did cut the lineup down to only one CPU, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, and that the release was postponed to April 20th. I would have liked to see more CPUs and an earlier launch in the first quarter. So yes, AMD did deliver in theory, but it's not what we were expecting. Still, I'm excited to get first benchmarks in the coming weeks. I'm always looking forward to new pleading edge tech. AMD also delivered on the mobile Rembrandt. The Ryzen 6000 APUs are actually really strong and deliver quite a bit more performance and efficiency over the previous models. The integrated RDNA 2 graphics performs especially well. I think it's still very likely that we'll see Rembrandt coming to the desktop once Socket AIM-5 has launched in late 2022. Although that might depend on how quickly we will see AMD's Zen 4 based APUs, codenamed Phoenix. So far the APU always lagged behind about a year, but with Zen 4 this could change. Let's see, for the time being, I'm adding Phoenix to the roadmap in early 2023. Taking a look at the HEDT CPUs, late last year we expected AMD to release a new Threadripper CPU with Chagall and Chagall X, but then everything changed. Chagall only exists as a Threadripper Pro lineup for business customers. There's no actual retail Threadripper. And Chagall X has been X completely, pun intended. 
AMD is focusing their 3D vCache efforts on the server market. That's why we only get one Zen 3D CPU in a desktop and no Chagall X. Kinda sad, but it does make sense from AMD's point of view. And last but not least, there's Zen 4. Not much has changed, but there are rumors that the Ryzen 7000 CPUs might launch in the early third quarter. So we could get our hands on Zen 4 a bit sooner than expected. These are still only rumors though, so it's not set in stone. Still great to see that we didn't get any rumors of delays. Same as Intel, AMD seems to know what they're doing in the CPU space. Compared to the old roadmap, the new one has changed a bit, but where it counts, AMD did deliver. Oh, and I didn't have the new Zen 3 parts on the roadmap at all. I didn't expect AMD to release them so late in the product cycle. Still, better late than never. Next up are AMD's Radeon GPUs. Let's take a look. Not much has changed here. AMD did deliver their mobile RDNA 2 refresh as expected with new 6000M and 6000S GPUs, which actually turned out to be quite good. Especially the new S series offers really good efficiency and the increase in the amount of different products AMD offers in the mobile space shows how much AMD has grown as a company. A desktop refresh with a 6950 XT, 6750 XT and 6650 XT is still supposed to happen over the next few weeks, but very little info has been leaked so far. I'm not 100% certain, but the rumors have been persistent, so I will keep it on the roadmap. The timeline for RDNA 3 also hasn't changed. Navi 33 is still supposed to be a monolithic 6 nanometer chip and will most likely be released before Navi 32 and 31, with the bigger MCM-based products coming in late Q4 or early 2023. Oh, and AMD released Navi 24 in the desktop as the 6500 XT. It's not as bad as everyone made it out to be, especially under the current market condition, but it's not a great product either. So with Radeon, not much has changed. No rumors about products we didn't expect in November of last year. No infos about further delays. As we get closer to the second half, we should get more rumors and leaks though. Let's see how the next roadmap update will look like. Which brings us to Nvidia and their part of the roadmap. Back in November, rumors of an MP refresh were going around, but so far we haven't seen anything at all. We got a 3050 and a new $2000 3090Ti, but the talks about a refresh has somewhat died out. I don't think we will see an actual Ampere refresh before the launch of Lovelace, which is still rumored to be in the fourth quarter. Of course, Jensen could always pull a fast one and release some cards with an added super, but I'm taking the refresh of the roadmap for now. I know the roadmap looks kind of bleak for Nvidia, but it's only because I'm not really focusing on products that aren't meant for retail. Otherwise, the newly released Hopper HPC GPUs would be on there. Oh, and since I did split AMD's RDNA 3 GPUs into their individual chips, I'm doing the same for Lovelace with AD102, 103, 104, and 106. Last but certainly not least, we have Apple. And I have to say, the predictions from last time turned out to be pretty accurate. I expected an M1 Quad somewhere in early 2022, and Apple did release their M1 Ultra just a few weeks ago with their new Mac Studio. Although the M1 Ultra is more of an M1 Duo instead of M1 Quad, and an actual Quad might still be in the works for the upcoming Mac Pro. We expected a new M2 chip to launch with the new MacBook Air, but so far we haven't seen it. This might change with the upcoming WWDC in early June, so I'm gonna push the M2 a bit further down the road in the new roadmap. That leaves us with only the A16 chip. The rumors about a possible delay and or the switch to TSMC's N4 process only gotten more detailed. We still don't know if Apple will release an actual new A16 on a 3 nanometer process, if we will see delays, maybe a backport or a shrink, or if Apple just pulls it off like nobody expected. I made a whole video about it, but so far I don't see any reason to change the roadmap here. Looking at the updated roadmap, we can see that some areas did change quite a bit and others didn't change at all. Intel's CPU department executed pretty flawlessly while their entire GPU roadmap just fell apart. Hate to see it, but that's what happens when you overpromise and underdeliver. something AMD also had to learn the hard way. AMD was able to mostly stick to the timelines and predict the releases. We got Rembrandt for mobile and Zen 4 might even be released a bit sooner than expected. Zen 3D aka Vermeer X and the next gen Chagall based Strap Ripper were cut down quite a bit. Zen 3D got delayed from an expected early Q1 release to April and now there's only one CPU. Chagall will only release as a Threadripper Pro for business customers and Chagall X isn't happening at all. On the Radeon side, AMD executed as expected. We got the RDNA 2 refresh for mobile and a desktop refresh is still in the works according to the latest rumors. Same with RDNA 3 which is still on track for late 2022. Nvidia did disappoint a bit since we didn't get any super refresh cards, but with the addition of the 3050 and the 3090 Ti, they did add more cards into the mix. 
As a result, Loveless is the only fresh part left on the roadmap for NVIDIA this year. In my last video, I just talked about everything we know about the upcoming RTX 4000 GPUs. Go check it out if you're interested. And of course, Apple delivered as expected too. We got a bigger M1 chip with an even bigger one made still to come. The upcoming M2 probably has to wait until summer or early fall, whenever Apple will release the new MacBook Air. And the next-gen iPhone chip, A16, is still hanging in the ropes. We also discussed it before on this channel in my A16 video. At least we know that the second half of 2022 will become increasingly more exciting. Raptor Lake battling it up with Zen 4 and Arden A3 fighting against Lovelace. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I'm interested in your thoughts on the roadmap update. Are you disappointed in the current developments? Did you expect more, for example, in regards to Zen 3D or maybe NVIDIA's rumored supercards. What upcoming products are you most excited about and do you think we will hit delays later in the year? Leave a comment down below and let's see who gets it right for the next roadmap update. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.